I want to welcome everyone to the special meeting of Lawndale City Council with the Sheriff's Department. I'm going to ask the City Clerk of the City City Clerk to give us a roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Kearney. Here. Councilmember Suarez. Here. Councilmember Hoffman Gorman. Here. Councilmember Cuevas. Here. Mayor Poland Miles. Here. All members are present. Thank you, sir. I'm going to ask Councilwoman Hoffman Gorman to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. I would like everyone to find the closest American flag, either digitally or in person, physically, and put your right hand over your heart. Gentlemen, please remove your hats and recite along with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilwoman. Let's hear from the, the city clerk's department to see if there has been any oral communication. Hi, Mayor. No uh, public comment have been received. Thank you. Okay, we will skip comments from the council. We have one item on this agenda, and that's um, a discussion between the city officials and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department um, concerning um, issues of mutual concern. Okay, with that, I want to welcome um, Sheriff Department personnel. Captain Allen is here. And Let's let's have a, a dis discussion. Take it away, um, um, Captain. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, it's Kevin Chun. If if I might just um, um, say a little something before we uh, get started with uh, Captain oh, Allen and or Captain Le um, Lieutenant Leo, um, I, I just wanted to um, let the council know that. Um, uh, as I understand, this is uh, a meeting that uh, the council has had over the years um, with the sheriff's department. Um, we did it again uh, last year in August, and um, I wanted to try to get us on track to have these meetings um, on a regular basis with the sheriff's department. And it's um, really just uh, to um, provide for an open line of communications between uh, the sheriff's department and the city council to talk about um, issues, to be able to ask questions, and just hear from the Sheriff's Department about um, their activities and um, uh, their operations. Um, so with that, um, I, I have put together um, a list of discussion points that we can go over, uh, that Captain Allen can, can talk about. Um, and of course, if any of the city council members have any other items of interest or concern, uh, questions that they want to bring up uh, outside of the list, of course, you're uh, more than welcome to do so as well. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Captain Allen. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you uh, Kevin. I really appreciate that. So uh, hello, everyone. Mr. Mayor and the city council. It's a pleasure to be able to talk to you today. I'm actually coming um, off of a, a, a two or a one week vacation and I had some training the week before. So this is my first day back and I'm getting all caught up on everything that's been happening within the city. I know things have been going well. Uh, Kevin sent me, as he said, a list of uh, some discussion points that I think are really well rounded and, and probably are going to probably address, you know, 90 percent, if not most of any concerns or questions you might have uh, uh, in regards to what's occurring into the city. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and jump on into it. Um, one of the first things he asked, the first one he asked was, as, as everybody always wants to know, is what are the crime stats and, and kind of like the trends that are occurring in um, the city of Lawndale. So in, in regards to the crime in Lawndale, it's actually looking really good. Um, crime is tr trending down and it continues to trim down at a really fast pace compared to uh, last year. Um, as we all know, um, during the, our COVID year last year, um, crime was really on the rise, especially in regards to assaults um, and thefts and car thefts were, were um, a really big issue and concern with the city, as well as pretty much the county and, and nationwide. I'm happy to say that 
um, those types of crimes have been dropping steadily and, and really and really quickly. So um, I'll go through them real quick. So in regards to homicides, uh, so far this year, we've had one homicide. Um, as you know, on the suspects in that case, we uh, were able to capture them and they were in custody within a week or 10 days. Um, so that homicide was, was solved and those um, suspects uh, did, um, were filed on. Um, there's been um, no uh, rapes in the city uh, this year. Uh, in regards to robbery, robberies are actually down 39% from last year. So a negative 39% from last year are in your robberies. Uh, in regards to a um, aggravated assaults, um, as I said before, the city as well as the county and the nation um, during COVID um, with people uh, being stuck at home and things of that nature uh, nationwide, we saw a, 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 an increase, a pretty big increase in, um, in assaults, aggravated assaults. And specifically, those were um, driven by a lot of domestic assaults, domestic violence, um, not necessarily husband on wife, but sometimes wife on husband, sometimes brother on sister and sister on brother and brother on brother. So all those account for domestic assaults. And obviously, we did see an increase in those type of assaults occurring um, in our city and, and uh, throughout the county and the nation. I am happy to say, though, that um, they have steadily dropped. So, in, like, say, in January, um, uh, assaults were up 127% in the city in January. Um, in March, they were up 65%. Um, and now um, they're at 27%. So in a three month in a three month uh, period, uh, they have dropped tremendously. So as things are starting to open up, people are starting to get out. Um, the the trend has really reversed itself. So the salts uh, and as far as I can tell, they're going to continue to go down. But you can see that that that's such a huge um, such a huge drop that they've gone from 127% in in um, um, January. Um, actually down to 15% here in April. So um, that's a huge drop, like about an, 80, about an 86% drop um, just in three months. Uh, we're going to continue to see that pattern continue. So I think that's that's uh, really, really good. Um, burglaries are down 21%, uh, so negative 21% compared to last year in burglaries. So that's a great thing whenever your burglaries are below last year's. Uh, and the next one is larceny theft. So here we go once again. Um, with our larceny, with our larceny thefts, our larceny thefts were up 110 percent at the beginning of the year, and now they're down to 65. So we've dropped about 50 percent. As everybody knows, uh, we really one of the things we've always been discussing at the city council meetings, things of that nature, where people locking up their items. It seems like we just had a rash of people leaving things in their cars, uh, leaving things in their back of their trucks, leaving things visible, and people are coming by and stealing them. So um, last month, the month before, I was really asking our citizens to just make sure they lock up their stuff, take their valuables inside their house and things of that nature. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that the, it looks appears as though the word's been getting out because we've had a significant, significant um, drop in in um, our our theft. So like I said, those have gone from 121 uh, percent to 65.75 uh, percent just since just since um, March. So the thefts have been dropping and, and, they're, and they're still dropping. So that's really good. Um, last year, the, the, biggest, um, the biggest crime driver in, in our city last year was Grand Theft Autos, right? So Grand Theft Autos were, um, were up 127%. That was a countywide issue. I think at our last city council, <laughs> I told you how our trap unit um, um, did some search warrants. Uh, not just uh, for stolen vehicles, but also for the catalytic converters, which has been a huge issue and concern um, in our city as well as as, as well as the county. Um, since those have happened, our, our um, Grand Theft Autos have also just really dropped off. Um, they were at 120. Um, They're also at 127 percent at the beginning of the year. It's dropped all the way down to negative, not positive, negative um, 20. Um, 21.43. So we've gone from our highs of 100% plus in vehicle thefts, and now we've already come April, we're in the negatives. So in comparison, um, uh, this year to date, uh, we've had 44 stolen vehicles. Last year at this time, we were at 56. So we've actually made a complete turnaround where in stolen vehicles, where we were in the high positives, uh, we're now in the negative when it comes to stolen vehicles. So um, 
I think that has a lot to do with what our trap people have been doing. They've done a lot of search warrants on lately on chop shops and things of that nature. So it's really uh, uh, impacted um, the crime in your city um, for the better, um, obviously. And um, so things are really looking good in regards to stolen vehicles too. Um, our overall overall crime totals is uh, right now we're still um, at a, a a plus 13% from last year. However, in March, we were at a plus 55%. So once again, that just shows how much um, the crime is is dropping in the city. And these numbers are still going to continue or look like they will be continuing. So people have been doing a great job. Our citizens in, in Londo have been doing a great job because, like I said, the master, the, math, the, the biggest drivers of our crime were, uh, were the thefts and thefts of cars. And it looks like as far as thefts of cars, the department has gotten a handle on that. It's been doing a great job with it. And then, you know, I can't, we can't take really a lot of credit for the, the, the thefts. It looks like our citizens are really taken to locking up things and um, protecting, their, their, protecting their, their valuables and um, been paying attention to what we've been saying in our city council meetings. And it looks like those are what has really turned um, the crime around uh, in regards to theft. So I um, really appreciate what our citizens have been doing uh, in regards to thefts and stolen cars and, and keeping their, their things locked and secured has really impacted, had a great impact on our crime and the crime rapes here in, in the city of Blondell. Uh, that's what I have in regards to crime. If anybody has any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Well, that's awesome. I uh, really appreciate those um, those crime um, that and the reduction um, in, in crime. That's that's really um, awesome. Um, um, work um, by the department uh, in collaboration with um, our residents and our um, business owners um, here in the city. So I want to thank you. And your staff for that, um, Captain. I want to ask the um, council um, anything they like to share or they want to opine on um, um, any of the um, the crime stats you just mentioned. I just have one question, Mayor. And yes, ma'am. This is for Captain Allen. Those figures that you just quoted us um, are those off of. Uh, Items that you responded to or items that our citizens called in? Uh, well, every, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of confused because when we, those are the crime stats. So that means there's a report, but every single crime stat has a report. So most reports would be um, based on your citizens calling in. Okay, that's like, what so, I'm saying. Yeah, so like that's all what these I was probably, looking for. Yeah, so all of them would be. Uh, all of them would be off of a, off of a call for most for the most part they'd be off calls probably maybe two or three percent might not be um, but most would be off calls. Okay, that's what I just wanted to to clarify. Thank you. You welcome. Anybody else have anything? Anyone else want to share anything? Um, this is Councilmember Suarez. I did have one question, but I think it's um, it's with regards yes, to tagging. It's with regards to tagging. We've been noticing. Um, here and there, especially in the area where, where we did have a few incidences by uh, Freeman and um, Manhattan Beach area, noticing a few taggings. I don't know um, with a few gang affiliated signs on there. Um, I'm not sure how that how we're monitoring that situation, if that means anything or if it's simply just, you know, just tagging or, or if that's an indication of anything else. Okay, well, I'll, that was actually my number uh, three, so I'll, I'll get I'll jump to number three real quick. So, uh, in regards to um, gang um, gang activity and and suppression, um, just like yourself, we we have noticed um, a little pickup in graffiti, especially over the last uh, couple weeks. Um, as you as you may or may not know, uh, you know, Londell does have a, a gang. Uh, Londell thirteen um, is is your gang, and they are at kind of like, for lack of a better term, at war, even though it's not really a serious, like, war with um, um, Serenos, which are, in, uh, our, which are in Gardena. So we have noticed a little uptick in in, in that uh, graffiti. Uh, we are addressing it. Our SAOs are tracking the graffiti. You know, we're keeping an eye on who's doing it. And uh, we have made some, uh, some gang arrests. Matter of fact, uh, last week, we made an arrest of a Londell 13 uh, member with, uh, um, with a gun. 
So we actively, in regards to, uh, you know, gang activities and suppression uh, between our, our uh, regular patrol deputies and your SAOs, um, and we also have OSS that come through your city. Uh, uh, we are um, keeping on top of, of uh, the gang situation that uh, that's current inside your city. Um, and that's why, like, when we did have that, um, unfortunately did have that homicide, um, and back in January, we were able to catch the people so quick because of the kind of like the, the work that um, all three of your sections do uh, beforehand. You know, we have a lot of intelligence uh, going on, things of that nature. We were able to solve those type of crimes, those type of crimes real quickly because obviously they don't even happen that often to begin with. So when they do, we're able to jump on top of it. Um, but just like yourself, uh, ma'am, um, we have noticed a little pickup on it and we are, you know, monitoring it and, and you know, trying to, you know, figuring out who's exactly okay. doing it and how it relates to any type of uh, gang type crimes that are occurring in the city. But we are, we are um, definitely aware of that pickup you, that you noted. Thank you. Was there anybody else? I have a question also, and I, I, I'm also having a problem with, um, Gang, the upswing in the the graffiti in the neighborhood, um, and Kevin and I have spoke, and so has Michael and I have spoke. I just haven't spoke to you, Captain, or the Lieutenant about this. Years ago, um, we were really vigilant about when our city went and removed graffiti. That a photograph was taken, and it, it was made available to the sheriff's department. I would like to see more communication as to, uh, because I've been asking Kevin, um, I'm wanting to see restitution happen for property damage uh, by graffiti. And so I'm wanting to have better communication as to who's doing the graffiti and the fact that we also can recognize what what part of the the graffiti is looking like who's doing it or so that we can drive by and say oh well it's in that color and it's it says this that means that it's that gang um i think as elected individuals we need to be aware as to what's going on better with the gangs by the upswing of the graffiti. I think it's just a telltale mark. And I, I, I would like some more um, attention paid to it that, that we get, that we also get the information. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely give you more information. I, I don't know in regards to, uh, you, you mentioned a couple of things, but in regards to like restitution, um, that's going to be more difficult because just because it's gang graffiti, I don't necessarily think you can you can necessarily get money out of out of a gang. What happens normally with restitution is if somebody gets caught doing something, and and they are get caught committing a crime or get caught doing the graffiti when they go to court, um, part of that um, uh, the judge can have them do restitution in regards to um, you know paying for that that damage. But I I don't necessarily know that. Uh, if it's possible that if he had some type of gang graffiti, just just gang graffiti in and of itself with no person to actually put it on, I don't think there's a way that you can do uh, restitution and just basically blame that gang if, I, if I'm making sense or if I heard you correctly. No, no, I'm wanting the individual that is actually doing it. Yeah, I mean, we catch the actual people doing it then and they get arrested, then yeah, when, you, when they go to court, um, part, part, uh, uh, part of going to court when you, when you get found guilty is there is a there is a, uh, a restitution element to that um, when when that does occur? Um, so what I what I'm asking from Kevin is I want to know um, what that restitution charge is, and I want to make sure that we are um, hitting them in their pocket, just like we're doing on fireworks. Let's go to the maximum of what we can get from them for restitution. Uh, we've had enough of this graffiti. It's it's time it, it gets under control. It used to be for several years, we still had graffiti, um, but our graffiti uh, guy who goes out and cleans it could keep up with it. And lately we can't keep up with it again. And it needs to be slowed down in one place. And if we, just like fireworks, let's hit them hard in, in their pockets if they can't learn to control this stuff. 
Yes, Miss um, Councilmember um, Hoffman Gordon Gorman. Um, <clears throat> regarding restitution, um, I can certainly work with Captain Allen to. Um, well, first off, regarding graffiti, I can I can certainly work with Captain Allen to um, find out you know if there are trends with graffiti, if it's um, coming from a gang or maybe a particular tagger. Um, if there are trends like that, I can um, try to see if I can get that information. Uh, working with the department uh, with regard to restitution, um, let, let me check in with. Um, our city attorney to see how that process works um, when it when it makes its way to court um, and restitution is assigned by the uh, by the judge. I, I'm not sure what that means for the city in terms of um, you know some of that coming back to the city or how that works for the individual that's being charged. So I'll have to get some more information regarding that. Um, but I, but I do understand your point uh, about, you know, trying to, to, to make this um, be a financial issue for those that are doing it. I'm just not sure what the city's role is with that. Um, the other part that you mentioned regarding the city's response, uh, obviously that is something that we can control. And um, um, graffiti is still, for, for us, I, um, this is something that Julie and I, have ongoing discussions about. Um, our policy is still 24 hours in most cases. If a report of graffiti comes in, um, we have it removed within 24 hours, unless it's reported, um, uh, you know, on a on a weekend where it can't be gotten to until Monday. In that case, it would be 48 hours, um, you know, as a maximum. So uh, we, we we do try to stick to that. I understand that, Kevin. Thank you for your response. And it's just an area of concern that I have is it feels like that um, it's on the rise again. And I, I just want to put a kibosh on it as quickly sure. as, as possible. Did anybody else have any uh, questions in regards to uh, gang activities? Yeah, one on that, um, I'm not sure if it's gang activities, but um, going back to the graffiti. Uh, I think it was last weekend, the um, the welcome to um, Hawthorne sign on Hawthorne Boulevard, the monument was um, was tagged. I'm not sure if it was, if it was um, graffiti or not. I uh, noticed the Lawndale sign was not. I'm wondering, is that indicative of anything? Um, Lawndale versus Hawthorne um, taggers or gang members? Do you have any idea on that? No, because, you know, and no, because it's hard to say unless the person actually gets caught what their motivation was behind it. So just, I mean, like I said, we, we there's no like war going on between Hawthorne and Londo, things of that, that nature. So uh, obviously you're always gonna, you, you know you're going to have some people that are going to go out and do some tagging or some spraying and things of that nature. But it's, at this point, it's not indicative of anything more serious. Okay, great. Thank you for that response. Anyone else have anything on that item before the captain moves to his next? Item. Okay, go ahead, Captain. Uh, Captain Allen, before you do move on, can I can I just say um, uh, there some of the council members um, need to um, um, leave the meeting at about uh, one thirty. So I know we have several items. So if you can just kind of um, uh, keep that in mind as you're going through the list. Okay, you know, yeah, I think some will go pretty fast. Um, so. Like this next one, I was asked basically the state of South LA station. So the state of the station is really good. Uh, most, uh, you know, through COVID, I, at the most, I think I had 27 deputies out. Um, everybody's back. We haven't had any bouts of COVID in the last like month or so. So, um, you know, nothing impacted the city of Lawndale as far as as far as uh, of deputies um, work in the city. So. Uh, there hasn't been any uh, uh, protests at the station or anything significant recently, and there doesn't seem to be anything on the future. So, um, state of the station is 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 good uh, as far as the deputies. Uh, number four we have here is homelessness. So, I, I've been told that you really have routinely you have about um, ten homeless folks that are kind of been in and out of Lawndale for a long period of time. 
Um, uh, so, you know, outreach, I know, is continuously being offered to them by my SAOs. I think Michael does it, too. Um, we also know there's an issue on Kingsdale that we're, we're, we're addressing or at, the, at the present time um, with one of the female homeless people that seems to keep on coming back and returning. Um, so we're, really, we're, we're aware of the homeless uh, issue. Um, it's obviously, this is a concern with us. Um, as we always say, you know, it's not a crime to be homeless. Um, so one of the things that we always have to uh, try to remember is that, you know, our job is to try to get people uh, uh, services and, and get them to, to not be homeless. I know we have been able to get a couple of people um, services where they ended up being out of the city, but being actually being taken care of long term, which has been uh, very good uh, for us. So um, once again, I know home, homelessness, I get those phone calls every once in a while. And, and that is uh, always on one of our top of our lists that we're trying to make sure that um, we deal with uh, our homeless folks, but, you know, um, deal with them in a, humane, in a humane way and offer services. Um, but we also know that them being in some places that they are, you know, isn't good. It isn't good in the city, you know, and, and it, it, it brings about stuff. So um, we're, we're aware of it and we, we stay on top of it as, as much as we possibly can. Um, anybody have any questions about homelessness? Any questions on homelessness? Okay. Go ahead to your next item. Uh, all right. Well, here's the like, here's the big one, and we've already talked about it. And since I've come back, it's the fireworks um, suppression. So I was told today that the ordinance was actually been been completed. Uh, so we're going to be starting May 17th, is what I've been told. Uh, so I think everybody's aware of the plan and, and going forward. I, I was told that I know the city is, bet you know, between now and May 17th is going to do a. Uh, uh, you know, a campaign, an information campaign that so people know exactly what's been going on. Um, it's my intent or my belief that this will, this is probably going to be uh, something, uh, this new thing that we're going to try this year. I think it's going to be very impactful, uh, especially not just maybe this this year, but um, going through the, the, the following years when people see how much it did impact their pocketbooks. Um, so, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, I have to really think, um, um, Kevin and, and Michael for, and, you know, collaborating and really trying to address this issue in a way that hadn't been addressed before. I know fireworks has just been a huge, huge, huge problem in the city and the surrounding South Bay cities. Um, but I think this is um, something that's going to have a huge impact. I know the fines are, what, $1,000 and $2,000, um, but just being able to be able to issue a citation and not actually see the actual person, but be able to see it from a yard, things of that nature. It's going to, it's going to be a, a huge, huge um, difference in how we were able to conduct um, the, the, conduct this suppression. So I'm hoping that this will have a significant impact. Obviously time will tell, but it's good that the city actually is, was, is putting something forward with some teeth to actually uh, help us combat this issue. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what happens this year and how successful um, uh, anybody have any questions about the fireworks suppression? Um, Just for a quick one, go ahead. This is Shirley. Um, I do have a question. We This past weekend, I've noticed that people are using the illegal fireworks already. Um, is patrol looking for those or do the neighbors still have to call it in? What's well, a combination? I mean, a neighbor can call it in. I mean, if it happens in front of patrol, then then they'll, you know, deal with the issue in front of them. But I mean, the thing is with illegal fireworks, I mean, people can see a, it's not like people aren't looking, people can see a patrol car, you know, way down the blocks. And like I said, you know, you, it's, um, even when you're when you're way down the when you're way down the street, you light them off. You don't know exactly which house it happened in front of, and things of that nature. That's why, you know, when we start May seventeenth, that's why we'll be using under undercover vehicles, things of that nature, um, okay. so that we can you know sneak up on people and actually be able to pinpoint where they're coming from, things of that nature. Because obviously, you don't want to put a wrong address on a house either. So I mean, if you're two blocks, three blocks down the street, you see a firework go up, you, mean, you don't necessarily know which house it actually came from. Um, but when, when the you know, starting May 17th, though, we'll be doing things that are different from patrol so that uh, it'll be easier to identify where things are actually coming from. So we have to be we have to be accurate with that information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Captain, I was hoping that if, if it was helpful, if we would 
would have what I'm calling um, hot streets or streets of um, concern to, to be kind of like on a watch list. Um, I know I can identify at least two streets in my area that, you know, even you know, that was constantly a problem last year, and one of which um, discharged some fireworks um, about two or three days ago in the same location. So I'm just wondering if we can identify maybe um, some um, streets that we know more than likely would be of concerns based on you know, you know past um, experience, if we could um, forward that information um, to your, your deputies as the streets that they might want to um, definitely um, consider um, patrolling. I know they're going to do the whole city. No, we're, we're, we're going to do that. So, I mean, we're going to pull, we're, 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 you know, any streets that you have as council, as council members, let, um, let um, Lieutenant Leo know and Kevin, and we'll definitely focus on those streets as well as pull up from last year, previous years. We'll pull up where most of our calls came from and we'll concentrate on those and we'll concentrate on those areas. That's not, that's not a difficult thing to do. Um, so we'll definitely oh, okay. do that. So if you have any name, you know, feel free to email me or Leo or, or Kevin, the, the streets that you, you feel or your constituents um, said were the worst ones. And we'll definitely focus on those. That, that won't be difficult at all. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other um, questions on the fireworks before the captain moves on? Uh, Mr. Mayor, this all is right, Michael. Please. If I could just add to uh, some yeah. of the things the captain was saying just now. Uh, Matthew did point out to me that the second reading of the change to the ordinance won't take place until the next council meeting, which is May 3rd, and it has to be 30 days after the ordinance passes before we can actually begin issuing citations for fireworks. So the first citations won't be able to issue till June. Um, now, of course, May 17th date, though, is six weeks before the holiday, so that's why we came up with that date, and that on that date, uh, is when the SAOs will begin shifting from their current shifts in the mornings to afternoons and evenings. So they'll still be working the same days. They're just going to be working later in the day and into the evening. Um, but the, the more important thing is we won't be able to write any sites until 30 days after the ordinance passes, assuming it passes at the next council meeting. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Thanks, sir. Okay. Please continue, um, Captain. Okay, um, we were asked about Sergeant Nitt. So as, as I think all of you know, um, Sandy was involved in a pretty uh, bad um, uh, traffic accident um, right here off the 110 transition where a, a gentleman um, decided he was going to stop his car and, and turn off his all his lights um, in an effort to uh, um, kill himself. And unfortunately, Sandy's the one that, that T-boned right into him. So he, he sustained some injuries, some, you know, moderate to serious injuries. He's healing. He's healing. Bit, he's healing well. But he he probably won't be back for you know for for the significant future. But Sandy's doing okay. Um, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. So uh, it didn't it didn't it didn't stop his vocal cords. So when I talk to him, he still talks to me for fifteen minutes without me asking him. <laughs> so he's Sandy's doing <laughs> San, Sandy's doing good. Uh, <laughs> um, motor deputy. So yeah, our our, our motor deputy deputy Cohen. You know, uh, he sustained uh, some serious injuries. Uh, a few months ago, he's actually still pending a surgery. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, you, the, you guys still decided that you wanted a, a motor deputy, so that is being still funded. His his funding went away. You guys are still funding a motor item. You know, it's not a motor; it's it's through overtime, so it's a reduced rate. Um, but the functions uh, that a uh, motor deputy was doing um, is still being carried on. Um, and especially now with schools opening up and things of that nature, it's really good to have them out there because people are so used right now over the last year or so of not having a lot of pedestrian traffic and children, things of that nature. Um, they're going to, uh, you know, the, the, having the motor deputy out there uh, enforcing traffic violations is, is one of the keys to keeping people uh, uh, keep keeping people safe, which kind of runs into my next thing in regards to upcoming operations. So if you're, if you're aware or not aware, um, we did do uh, two over the last month. We did two crosswalk operations, um, which kind of blends into what we were saying before. Um, they were done at 149th and Hawthorne, 145th and Prairie, and then this was this is once again was because uh, you know people aren't used to having people out there walking a lot, and especially our kids and around schools, things of that nature. So we did it. We did those two crosswalk operations. They're very successful. Um, um, which gets people to start paying attention to our, our crosswalks again. Uh, we did have uh, a while back, we did have a, a death in regards to a person entering a crosswalk. Um, it was very unfortunate. 
Um, but uh, um, so, and that's because people have really just kind of lost their awareness of people walking around now. And we especially don't want that to happen again, especially with our, our children out and about now with schools opening up. Um, so uh, we did do those crosswalk operations. We will do um, a couple more um, just so that people start realizing again that, hey, we got to be really mindful of, of people around us, pedestrians walking, sidewalks, things of that nature uh, in an effort to make sure we keep our um, citizens safe. So did, did anybody have any questions about um, our operations traffic-wise? Any questions? Okay, let's, well, let's our, proceed. Um, okay, and, and uh, my last one is regards to um, community outreach. I know uh, speaking to several of you the last month and a half, a half um, has been a big concern about community outreach and us being out, you know, out in, the, in public. So I know I've, I've spoken to uh, um, um, Kevin and I think um, Councilwoman Hoffman Gorman. I think uh, this was a big concern of yours. So, you know, with COVID, obviously with COVID, we weren't able to do a whole lot of things, um, uh, have meetings and meetings and things of that nature. Um, as things ease up or open up, I should say, we definitely plan on on, on reinvesting into our uh, into our community programs, specifically like Neighborhood Watch and things of that nature. Um, definitely want to get um, my deputies out and about in the community and people seeing them. You know, we missed so much over the last year, year and a half between um, National Night Out and, and our our um, our different neighborhood watch meetings and just all kinds of things that we weren't able to do over the last year, year and a half. So as things open up again, we definitely, uh, and speaking to Kevin, we want to bring all the, all those things back. He has some great ideas. Uh, in regards to getting uh, my deputies and myself out uh, amongst the people, amongst the citizens, so they can just, you know, get to meet us, not just on a law enforcement level, but as, on a personal level, which we definitely would enjoy doing. And um, and also, as far as for crime prevention-wise, um, making sure that our neighborhood watches, things, that, things of those nature um, get built up again um, as we kind of move forward and get out of this, get out of this COVID era. Um, so that's definitely uh, on our, our, our calendar and our, our, for things to do, especially towards, you know, as we move through um, 2021 and definitely into 2022, um, more of those things should be happening. So uh, I know National Night Out's in August, in August, I believe. I don't have it right in front of me, but I think it's August. So hopefully maybe, you know, through the summer, this, the state will completely open up. We can start having um, large gatherings again. We'll kind of see where things are. But that's definitely on our uh plate to be able to do things in a community like that going forward again. And Mr. Mayor and council members, um, based on some of the comments I've heard from council members and then talking with Captain Allen, uh, Michael and I have also been um, looking at what we can do to uh, promote community outreach uh, between the sheriff's department and our, and our, um, and our residents and businesses. And um, uh, it, we, we will have some items uh, in the budget uh, that for you to consider. Uh, with this next uh, budget cycle, um, things like Captain Allen already mentioned, National Night Out, an event for that, um, more re re restarting our um, neighborhood watch program. We'll, we'll see if we can get that started and then have um, regular meetings, um, you know, in the neighborhoods. And then other things like um, coffee with a deputy or coffee, coffee with deputies or tacos with deputies. Um, We've asked for some money in the budget to do those kinds of events. And again, it's just to um, promote this engagement between the community and the sheriff's department so that um, it's not so much, um, you know, an us versus them kind of uh, uh, situation between our residents and, and, and police officers um, like it is in, you know, other parts of uh, California or other parts of the country that have created so many of the problems that we've seen um, uh, in the news. So we're, we're, we're hoping to try to, you know, bridge that gap as much as we can and, and just make it so that our community sees cops for, you know, who they are, their people as well, and trying to do a job and trying to protect us and, you know, for, for cops to hopefully show a different side to them as well, showing the community that, you know, they're, they're people who, who care and, and, you know, want to do good as well. So um, that's what we're trying to do with, with, um, with this program. Okay, thank you for that. Um, anything else on, on that, um, on Captain? Or? 
No, that's that's pretty much all I have. That answers that's everything that I have in regards to discussion points. And now, if if any, it's uh, open to anything else, um, but that's uh, what I what I was going to cover today. Okay, thank you for that uh, that report. Uh, does anyone have any um, closing remarks before we wrap it up? They want to share. All right. Well, Captain, we want to thank you and your lieutenant um, and your deputies for all the, the great work you guys are doing, guys, and doing in the community. Uh, we know how hard it is for you, um, the uh, women and men of the um, law enforcement um, um, these days to, um, to make sure that you're engaged in the community. We appreciate your engagement in the community, not just on the law enforcement um, standpoint, but as was mentioned earlier, the um, personal um, standpoint, and we really appreciate that. And it's starting to show, of course, um, you know, with our um, the relationship with the um, with the residents and the, the stats, as we see the, that um, our stats continue um, um, to go to go down, and um, that's in great part due to, the, um, of course, our relationship with um, the sheriff deputies um, in the community. So we really appreciate that. Oh, uh, you're welcome. And one thing I failed to mention, uh, I think you, everybody knows this because it was it was mentioned in our town hall, but I just want to reiterate it again, is that our deputies all have um, all have cameras now. So I know that's always a big, uh, you know, it's a, a, a big issue and concern with cities and it helps with liability and things of that nature. So everybody has body worn cameras now. Um, we got them in uh, phasing in back in like February. Wait, uh, all Lawndale okay. deputies have, have uh, body worn cameras now. Okay. Thank you for informing us of that. With that, seeing that there is no other items, any any last items from the council members? All righty, hearing none. It is now. Let's see what time is it? Uh, One eleven, and this meeting is adjourned. Ah, uh, thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you, you guys. <laughs>